Hi, and welcome to C Programming. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to pass an array to a function. So, let's quickly jump into the code directly. So, in our main function, we will declare an array called ARR1. Now, ARR1 will have a size of 4 and values of 2, 4, 6, and 8. So, 4 values for the array of size 4. So, now we want to pass array 1 as a parameter to a function. So, we're going to create a function called display array. So it's a basic function that will just do the display of an array. Okay, so first of all, this function will not return anything back to the main function because it's quite obvious. We just want to pass an array to this function to display the values inside the array and not to do anything more than that. Okay, so how do we pass an array to a function. So first of, first of all we say int and we say a variable, let's call this a. So array1 will be passed to int a, but int a can't be a variable, it needs to be an array. And how do we define that? By square brackets. We don't give a size because we don't know what's the size of the array being passed to the function but we have an extra variable called size so we pass the actual size of the array as well to this function so that will be our function prototype and let's quickly go and do the actual function so the actual function will be the following so we will create a counter variable we will use a for loop we initialize i to be equal to zero i needs to be smaller than now i was always smaller than the size of the array so in this case four but using four in this function doesn't make our function very practical and reusable because 4 limits this function to display only arrays with a size of 4 and that's why we're passing the size variable to this function so we will use size and then we can increment the counter variable and then we can use a normal printf statement and we can say percentage d new line and we can say a square brackets i okay everything is so far so good now we need to have a function call to this display array function so how do we do this function call we just call it by its name display array we have round brackets, we pass the array to the function, and we pass the size. Now, there is two things that we need to take note of, and I will explain it after we have built and run this. So let's quickly recap. We've got our function prototype, display array, with a parameter of int a, that's going to be the app array that will receive those values and size that will define the size of this array then we've got the actual function and this function will utilize a for loop to traverse through each element of this array and display it with a printf statement okay so let's save this we press and build and run and let's hope there's no mistakes okay so the result is two four six and eight 
is being printed out to the screen. So, this works. So, the function itself is not that difficult, the inner contents of this function, because we have already done this. But now we need to understand how the array is actually passed to this function. Now, array, array 1, ARR1. What is ARR1? That's the name of this function. But what's it truly? Okay. So, I'm not going to go into the deep theory of it all. But, by passing a normal value, for instance, 4, to a parameter in size, we call this method call by value because the value of 4 is copied into the variable int size. So we make a copy of this value. Now, because arrays tend to get very large or maybe larger than just size 4, it's not very efficient to make a make an exact copy of this array. And thus, they decided by passing an array to a function, we will utilize call by reference. So call by reference is very, very different from call by value. We do not make a copy. Now, what's the implication of call by reference? So, array 1, ARR1, is actually the reference of this array. So what's the reference? It's actually the address in memory where this array is being stored at this current moment. So, how do we know this? Let's quickly do some quick tests. So I'm going to use a printf statement to actually go and do this. Just to illustrate what I'm actually saying. So, I'm going to say the address of a or r1 is percentage d. And I'm going to display a or r1. Okay, let's just put a new line before and after so that it's split from the rest of the output. So, if we build and run this, let's see what happens. Okay, so the address of ARR1 is this very big value, and we don't know what's that. But as I said now, this is the address of this array. Now, the address of this array, it's not actually the address of this whole array. It's actually the address of the first element of this array. Okay. So let's go in and test this theory. So the address of the first element, and the first element is element 0. But if we're going to display array 1 index 0, we will only display the value 2. And we do not want to do that. We want to display the address of ARR1 index 0. And how do we get this address? Something you have already been doing quite often by using the scan if we use ampersand. So ampersand gives you the address of a certain variable or index of an array. Okay, so let's save this and build and run and see if this will be the same as ARR1. We build and run, and we see that the first index address is exactly the same as just ARR1. Okay, so we know that we are passing the address of the first index, or the first value in the array, to the function. So, we know this is called by reference. But what's the actual implication of call by reference? So no copy or duplicate of this array is being made. So we 
are actually using the array declared in the main inside this function. That means that if we change a value inside this array in the function display array, we are actually changing the original array. So you need to be very, very careful by passing arrays to functions that may change values of the array because we don't want to necessarily change the original array. Okay. That's all from me. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.